Copyright laws apply to all contents of this video. Hello, Jamar Studios here, and this is our original fantasy action adventure, Like Water, The Next Age. Episode 19 We can do that, you just rest, said Ruby, while clearing up after a family picnic to her now six months pregnant eyes, who in turn went to sit beside her husband, who was using his programming skills to clean up the small camp he had created for him, eyes, Ruby and Maya. Don't worry, my love. As soon as there is any heavy lifting needed, I'd like to get in on it. But we'll have to make sure Ruby isn't looking, joked Barnabas as he allowed Eyes to rest her head on his shoulder. <sighs> Sorry to bring them here. We haven't got long, blurted out Harold as he approached Barnabas' area with Daniel and David helping an injured people to walk right behind him. What's going on? asked Barnabas. Agents, responded Harold. Get him, Maya, and Ruby to the safe house, instructed Barnabas, to which Eyes immediately responded. Nothing we throw at them seems to have any effect, informed David, as Barnabas noticed the three pursuing agents approach the area in full battle mode. Agent Adewale in his 10-foot ape-like bionic suits, Agent Gichi in a ninja-like bionic suit, and Agent Lambert in a tiger-like bionic suit. Before we try to hurt them, Let's first move them, said Banbus, hitting his palm on the ground, causing the large concrete spikes to shoot out beneath all three agents, causing them to clumsily get out of the way by a hair. While being bombarded with rock and ice boulders, being shot at them by David and Harold. After quickly regaining their balance, the agents with the help of their force fields chose to run through the two programmers attacks in an effort to put their hands on them. David and Harold reacted by jumping back while Barnabas leaped forward with a force field of his own made up of air and electricity. This allowed him to make contact with all three agents, utilizing his hand-to-hand -hand combat skills, which saw him swing around a large and powerful attacking agent at Dewale like a tree while effectively attacking and counter-attacking agent Gichi and Lambert. During this exchange, Barnabas was able to creatively use his abilities to crack all three agents' implants before leaping to the side of his comrades. Attack now! instructed Barnabas, prompting Daniel, David and Harold to unleash an onslaught of ice, earth and fire-based projectiles, which to the agent's dismay began to hit them. What happened to our force fields? asked Agent Gichi as he and his colleagues were forced to block. The four programmers then advanced forward and began to bombard the agents with a combination of both physical and elemental attacks, which put an immense strain on all three agents' battle suits, so much so it caused the cracked implants to shatter causing all of them to fall over like sack of potatoes while their battle suits disintegrated. What happened? asked David as he and his fellow programmers looked down at the bodies of their foes. Their damaged implants couldn't take the strain of the battle. Unfortunately for them, when their implants go offline, they go offline, explained Barnabas. Agents are destroying any wasteland colony they find. We have to do something, informed Harold. All we can do is empower people with the gospel of Jesus Christ, answered Barnabas, then beginning to make his way towards the safe house he had set up for emergencies. That's all you have to say? said Harold. What more do you want me to say? replied Barnabas. It's your fault the agents are on a rampage in the first place, stated Harold angrily. How did you figure that out? answered Barnabas. Let's see now. Zoo kidnaps your wife, you rescue your wife, Zoo ends up dead and then the government he works for begins to go on a rampage. The math isn't hard to do, argued Harold. So you're telling me things would be better if Zoo was alive, answered Barnabas. I'm saying it is selfish and hypocritical to throw all caution out of the window when someone you care about is in danger, but jump on the fence when the danger involves people you don't know, continued Harold. Harold, you, two capable programmers and an army of highly trained soldiers were helpless against three agents. How do you think you will fare against an army of agents? And who knows what else the government has? asked Barnabas. You being on our side is enough to make a difference, answered Harold. You're not listening. The enemy is destined to rule this time. As far as a natural battle is concerned, we are destined to lose. This is why our focus should be on things eternal, said Barnabas. Eternal? Like playing happy families with a pregnant wife while hundreds of people are being slaughtered, stated Harold. I'm not going to apologize for taking care of my family and for not going on a suicide mission with you, replied Barnabas, then proceeding to walk away. What about my family? They are still being held by the government, 
cried out David as he walked right up to Barnabas. My dear brother, your family was taken two years ago. By now they are either chipped or dead. Either way, there's nothing we can do for them, gently replied Barnabas. David, enraged, responded by punching Barnabas across the face, which in turn dropped him to the ground. A silence then followed, before David, Daniel and Harold walked away, leaving Barnabas on the floor. That is the end of the Like Water series, but before we go, answer this episode's question. Is Barnabas a hypocrite for not joining Harold, Daniel and David on a mission to bring down the government? Give your answers in the comments below as well as on our Facebook and Twitter page.